Hello my friends, Janet. Janet is here with a live video wherever you are. How are you doing? I hope you're doing very well. This is a Friday. I promise to be here. Now I'm here live. You're welcome. All of you coming in, I appreciate your presence. Thank you so much for coming. So, today I'm going to present the roadmap to America because many of you have been reading your emails and there's some confusion in the air so i said let me do this video to clear the confusion so for those who've been watching for a long time thank you for continuing to watch you will never miss you'll always learn something new for those who are coming for the first time welcome and that's why i'm doing this video i thought i would come here early but my car you know i had to fix it so i'm running late sorry i wish i was here much earlier i couldn't so i'm doing my best I'm here to clear the confusion. I'm here to clarify. I'm here to simplify. I'm here to make it easy for you. For all those things you've been reading, some of you are doing something about it. I'm very happy you're giving me feedback. Some of you have gone to the embassy, you've gotten visas, you've thanked me. Some of you, you're in the process of applying for student visas, you're asking questions, keep working on it. Some of you are nurses, you've begun the process. They are approving your documents. I'm happy about that. Some of you, you're coming on green cards. You're saying it's hard. Thank you for responding. I'm here. I promise to tell you when you come here, I'll still be here. Some of you, you're still wondering, saying, Janet, my wish is to come to America. What do I do? Okay? So that's why I'm here to clear that confusion. I'm going to simplify in this video. Probably I'm going to give a summary of what I've been saying for months and months. So if you're new on this page, this is a very important video for you. For those of you who've been watching me for a while, I'm going to still say something new that you didn't know. Thank you so much. I'm not ignoring you. Your time is very important to me. Thank you for choosing to spend time with me. You could be somewhere else. You chose to come and spend time with Janet. And at the end, I'll present a special controversy because... You guys know me, I'm very positive, but I'll have to deal with some of these things because some of my viewers, you know, for me, I always told you, I go with the numbers. If statistics tell me these people are asking about this, I better respond. If I come up with my own agenda, no one will follow me. So for me, I choose to, 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 to present what you ask. And it seems some of you are having some concerns about coming here, so I'll have to present. But you'll have to wait until the end of this video to hear what I have to say and my opinions, okay? Remember, I'm a blogger. I'm a vlogger, so I have opinions. You can agree or disagree, but those are my opinions, okay? Thank you so much for loving me and for being there for me. I'm here to present. No disappointment. Sit back and enjoy. Let me summarize for you, basically. The roadmap to America and how people come here and how you can count how you can come here and be among them. Some of you, you tell me, Janet, I want a job in America, okay? Some of you say, I want to be a student. Now, let me just put it in summary, okay? In summary. I'm not a lawyer, but I started a page for fun, a fun page. If you are someone who loves all things immigration, you have dreams to come, this is your page. Make this page your friend, okay? Janet is here. She's courageous. She's, she's fearless. No one will take me away from this page, okay? No one will take me out of this page. I'll stand for my truth, okay? So you are welcome. If you're here, follow me, okay? Let's start. The best visa you can always get you can always get to come to america the best visa is called a green card and stop full stop okay green card is the road to permanent residency It's the same as permanent residency if you hear people saying green card they mean permanent residency now we have to classify these visas in two categories immigrant visa non-immigrant visa guys if you are new on this page or you've been watching me from the beginning these are the basics let's start with the basics immigrant non-immigrant immigrant means you're showing up at the embassy you've gotten a visa directly from america probably it has been processed but by the state department or it has been processed by ua by uscis.gov and they are sending you to the embassy in nairobi in qatar in lagos wherever all over the world that is an immigrant visa. You show up there, more than likely they will give you that visa if you meet the qualifications, if they know you are not lying, if you pass the medical exam, if you are straightforward, if you tell them the truth, 
That is an immigrant visa. It has been approved in America. You are showing up as an ass. You are showing up as someone who won the diversity visa lottery. You just have to meet the requirements and they will give you the immigrant visa. Your intent to come and live in America permanently is known to the embassy. There is no confusion. I hope I'm clear. That is called immigrant visa. Okay? It can be usually when you reach here, they will send you a green card in the mail. And that is our story for next time. But basically what I'm saying to you, this, most people will come as people who got green cards through the diversity visa lottery. Okay? That is luck. It's based on luck and all of you, most of you know it. And I've told you, it's not open yet. I keep on checking the State Department. As soon as it opens, Janet will be here. I will post the link. I will give it to you. You will have the correct website. You will not have to pay money. You will not have to be on the wrong website. You will go there. You will click. You will watch Janet's videos on directions on how to apply. You will follow directions. Avoid mistakes. When the time comes for you to ask for that visa in the embassy, you will have an easy time and sail through. Okay, some of you, your nurses, you got a job, lawyers have filed for you a visa, it's an immigrant visa, you show up at the embassy, you meet the requirements, the embassy knows very well your intent is to go to America permanently, they give it to you, immigrant visa. Let's say you're in science and technology, maybe say you're a physiotherapist, you got a visa directly from uscis.gov, from the state department, they referred your visa in the embassy, you're only showing up as a protocol as a routine they evaluate you make sure you you have no issues they let you come to america the intent is very clear at that point unless you mess up you lie or you didn't feel things correctly more than likely you will get that visa okay we are done with the immigrant visa okay immigrant means permanent it means green card it means work permits all those the intent is very clear Let's move to non-immigrant visa. Non-immigrant means temporal. It's a temporal situation. You are going to ask a permit to enter the United States on a temporal basis, do your business and go back home. Okay? I hope I'm clearing to you, some of you, the reason I'm doing this video is because I go through the inbox, I have to clear these things. Today I said, let me start from the basics. Not everyone has been watching me from last year. Some of you started today, some of you last week, and you've been telling me you are very welcome non-immigrant temporal you are borrowing a permission to come to the united states examples f1 student visa temporal your business is to come here as a student graduate and go back home visitor tourist business you're coming here temporary do your business visit disneyland go wherever you want go back home temporal situation okay j1 visa exchange program religious workers okay conferences all those are examples okay all those are examples of non-immigrant visas you're asking the embassy for permission to stamp your passport so you can come in with a visa temporarily what are the requirements in on this part of the story non-immigrant the law tells the embassy that anyone coming on an immigrant visa their intention is to come to america and stay here permanently end of story that is what the law tells them they are there to weed you out based on that law even if they don't explain why they didn't give you a visa more than likely you did not meet that burden more than likely you showed up as a for a student visa for a visiting visa to come for graduation and they looked at you they did not see any family ties they did not see strong ties back home that will make you leave america and go back and the law tells them you cannot give such a person a visa end of story i don't work in the embassy but the law is open this is open information there is no one hiding this is open okay i can be confident to even go to the embassy and tell them i know this okay this is freedom of speech i'm telling you the truth this is what i've read this is what i've listened now every situation is different of course when you present in the embassy so I've cleared for you. Next time you go to the embassy, you need to know why you're going. For those of you asking me, Janet, I need a job. I need to come to America. You need to know specifically what is bringing you to America. Okay? Having said that, how come people are in America? They are not born in America. How come they are here? We have to ask ourselves these questions. And if we are interested to be like them, what do we need to do? Okay? Number one, especially 
countries that are not represented in America, okay? America has provided something called a diversity visa lottery. It's offered once a year. It's competitive. It's based on luck. Some of you told me I applied last year. I didn't get it. It's very difficult. No, it's a lottery. Some of you have told me 10 years they applied. It's free of charge. Why complain? Put in your paperwork, okay? Put in your paperwork. It, you don't have to know an uncle. You don't have to know an aunt. It's not bias. You don't have to pay anyone money. Just do put in the right information. You will stand a chance. Okay? If you did not watch our video, which was very important, if you go down here, if you are new on this page, you don't know how to find Janet, go in the search button. Facebook has a search button. Type in Immigrant Business Directory. In short, it's called IBD. You will find this page and the many videos invest your time from someone who sounds like you from someone who looks like you but she happens to live in america she has some experience you are getting from a horse's mouth i can tell you all these websites you go read you'll come out confused you have someone who has read the website for you and she has lived the experience she has gone through what you want to go through she's telling you based on experience and i have my own opinions okay now number one i've just tell you you have a chance to win a green card so long as you live in those countries that have been allowed by America to participate in the diversity visa lottery. As the name suggests, diversity means plenty outside people that have not been represented well in America. For countries like China, Mexico, India, in Africa, Nigeria, those people have been excluded because America believes they are here already in big numbers. The rest of you, if you qualify, put in your paperwork. We are expecting this is summer. We are almost going into October, which is fall. That is the time they usually announce the green card. We are moving very close. Be very, very ready, okay? That's point number one, the green card, okay? Now, not everyone comes on a diversity visa lottery, okay? Like me, I've been here long enough, okay? I came as F1 student. I converted to permanent residency. They gave me a green card. Then I became a United States citizen eight years ago. I qualified to file for my sisters. If I need a husband, I file for my husband. If I have children, I file for my children. So that's how people come, okay? That is the second way people come to America is through family-based lotteries, not lotteries, but green cards. Family-based. It means it's called family reunification, okay? A United States citizen will apply for their spouse, for the children, and for the parents. Those are given priorities. If I choose to file for my mother today, more than likely in less than one year, she will be in the United States. The visa is unlimited in such a situation. If I was to file for my children or husband, they do not have to wait on the line. All they need is to go through the protocol, which can be six months, nine months, who knows. But you understand what I mean. It's called immediate family members. They will get that green card. Okay, they don't have to wait on the line. That's how it works. Family best. Okay, if I choose to file for distant relatives, and those are my brothers and sisters, my friends, it takes years and years and years and years. Okay, it can take 7, 10, 15 years. So they are better off coming in another way. In fact, that's usually very tricky. If I file for someone like my sister, okay, then they go to the embassy for a visiting visa. The embassy will say, oh, but we see you try to go there permanently. We might not even give you. You know what I mean? So it's a balancing equation. I hope you get my point. Another way how people get green cards apart from family reunification, they can become as you know, they come as asylum, okay? They fear political persecution, okay? Religious persecution, all those things. They can come to America and say, you know what? I'm scared to go back home because of one, two, three. Look at this newspaper. They almost burned my house down. They almost burned my church down. Look, I'm very scared to go back home. Look at this evidence, okay? You can get a green card. Another one is through refugees. There is clear war in your country, okay? Based on humanitarian grounds, you go to the United Nations or all those uh, organizations, they have to recommend you. You cannot just wake up and say, I'm going to apply myself as a refugee. That has to go through an organization. Do you understand the difference? Okay. Then the biggest, most people get green cards through employment. People get green cards through employment. And some of you wonder, but how? Okay, but how can I get a work permit to come to America? And the reason is this. When they come here, and that's why I'm a big advocate for F1 student visa. 
it is expensive some of you tell me janet i can't afford it the school fees is so bad by the way people have made it you can make it but that's besides the point but this is how people get green cards when they come here they take a very good course they graduate they get employers those employers gave them something called h1b visa it's good for three years after three years it's renewed for another three years that's a total of six years within six years the employer loves you they can file for you a green card and you get to stay in america permanently when you're on a green card for five years you become a u.s citizen that's how it works i hope i'm making sense so why do I advocate for F1 student visa? First of all, there is time for you to organize your life. It's expensive, yes. It's time consuming, yes. But once you're here, you come here, they give you a social security number. They give you a driver's license. You mingle with everyone else. Yes, you can work off campus, but you can get 20 hours an, uh, a week to work on campus and pay your fees. The good news after you graduate with your master's, the good news after you graduate with your bachelor's, the good news after you graduate with your PhD, the good news after graduation, they give you something called Optimum Practical Training OPT. The famous OPT. That is one year where you apply for this OPT and the USCIS.gov will send to you a work permit. You can go work anywhere in the United States for one year okay you become legal you work in america outside campus for one year if you're in the science profession in the stem they call them stem science and technology they can let you work for 17 months and in fact you can renew for another year so it adds up to 29 months for stem okay so you're understanding the process you struggle okay you get f1 you come here you struggle as a student you graduate after one year you get opt during opt you ask an employer to file for you h1b after h1b you ask for a green card that is the pathway my friends no shortcuts nothing else that's how people are here okay that's how people are here they come here and stay that is the roadmap of saying in america student visa will give you that time it will give you time to buy these things guys okay that's why i advocate i'm like you know what I apply that community college I apply that university and i've always said when you come here okay those relatives you think will help you they have bills to pay they might not be there for you so the best thing is do your research find the cheapest college okay find the college that is friendly to international students find a college that has work programs do your investigations Choose your college wisely because when you come here, it will stick there. It will be a problem. I have to congratulate some of you. You call me, Janet, I have one million other account shillings. Where do I start? That is a good amount of money to start you at least the first year. Some of you think you have to go to the embassy with financial statements that are millions and millions. They understand family ties. They understand you will come here and you will get some help from people. You just have to prove with what you have, my friends. The most important thing you have to prove to those people is the law. These other things, they can work with you. You cannot break the law. They believe you're here, you're coming here, and you'll never go back home. So the law tells them to weed you out if that is your intention. You understand, guys? I'm a big advocate for student visa, okay? The rest of you tell me, I'm coming for a conference. I'm coming to visit my you who? I'm coming to visit this. I'm co Come here knowing that a visiting visa is exactly what they tell you. They don't lie. Come here knowing that a visiting visa is a visiting visa. You can, I can invite you, okay? You see this house here? I give you a room there. You go shower. I can take you to Disneyland. I can take you, you see the nice hotels and enjoy the mountains and the beaches. After that, what next? You understand, guys? Unless you network. For me, I'm into visiting visa if you know exactly why you're coming here. And the most important thing is to network. When you come, see places, meet people, look for those schools. You know, you know, Janet, you stay this far from college. Maybe I can apply for these schools. When I go back home, the embassy will now trust me because I got a visiting visa. I did what I promised. I went back. Now I'm asking for a student visa. I have a high chance for them giving me a visa. And then now you come as a student. You've come, you've seen, you've weighed your options. Come with that mindset. But if you come here with a visiting visa thinking like life will work through, Probably it will not work as it, it, you know, as expected. But having said that, you can come here and meet your friends and then there's love in the air. You can meet an American, you fall in love, who knows? 
I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying, if that happens, that's, uh, no, that's not up to me. Me, I'm just telling you the reality. If you come on a visiting visa, it means exactly that. If you come as a tourist, it means exactly that. These people don't lie. They don't lie, they don't lie. You come here, don't expect to get a social security number. Don't expect to go to school. Don't expect anything. That's why Janet is here. When you go to that embassy, I'm giving you this information so you go knowing exactly what you are doing. Do the right thing. Otherwise, you'll end up frustrated when you come here. You understand, guys? I'm helping you. Who else will tell you the truth? I'm telling you the truth, my friends. I'm telling you the truth. Weigh your options. Weigh your options before you go for that visa. If I were you, I'd rather wait one year, save some money, do my research by come on an F1 student visa. Because you will have more time. You will have more time, my friends. You will have more time to make this. Now, let's, 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 let's think like this. You apply for F1 student visa, okay? A degree, bachelor's degree takes four years. That's four years in America. You tell me how much you can do in four years, okay? All right, you decide to go for a master's. That's two years. That's another six years. Okay? Now you decide to go for PhD. Okay, that's another 11 years. And then they give you a PT, 12 years. And then you do H1B, another three years. Another year, H1B, you renew another. Before you know it, you're here for 16 years. Honestly, by 16 years, your life should have put itself together. My friends, do you understand the roadmap to America now? Do you understand when I tell you the roadmap to America? No one comes from there with an employer plucking them out of there and bringing them very rarely. And the people that have a direct pathway are nurses. Those ones can go to the embassy after they find employment in America, file with immigration in America, and get a permanent residency, show up in the embassy, get a permanent visa, and come. That brings me to the next point. Having presented the most marketable courses, we know number one on the list probably is nursing. Some of you are wanting to apply for nursing school good i love your dreams but this is the predicament this is the predicament let's think together the embassy has been processing so many visas for nurses do you think they are stupid they know if you're coming on a student visa to nursing probably you are pr planning to come and stay permanently especially if you're young this is my opinion this is not the law i don't work in the embassy this is my opinion if you have a degree in business administration, look for a course that is related to business administration. If you have a degree in hotels, look for a degree that is related with hotels. Okay? If you're in engineering, look for a course that is in engineering. Okay? Look for something that either relates to education or to experience. This is the trick that you don't know. This is where Janet comes in. When you come to America, no one will stop you with your dreams. This is nothing like where you come from after high school. You have to choose to do medicine, choose to do pharmacy, choose to do become, choose to do education, and that is it. End of story. You're stuck there for life. My friends, here you come for music. You say, no, I'm tired with music. I'm going to do medicine. Who will stop you? No one. You come here with engineering. You say, I'm tired with engineering. I want to do dentistry. Who will stop you? No one. You understand? Now you show up in the embassy, wanting to come for nursing. You are young looking. You, are, you have no family ties. The embassy will just say, cross, go back home. Are you understand? I'm just saying. I don't work in the embassy. This is an opinionated Janet talking best from experience and using my brain. I'm just using my thinking and my brain. Because that's why you go for that interview. Okay? I'm just telling you. Stick with what you went to school for until you reach here. Okay? If you are that person who is interested in nursing and maybe you did education, when you reach here, you do your first semester, you go to the advisor, you say, I want to change to nursing. Good news, you change to nursing after graduation, you apply, they give you a green card, you get a job, your life roadmap in America is straightforward. The rest of you, and you are asking me, Janet, so does it mean if I did this other kind of info, uh, education, I can never get a green card? That's not the case. The thing is, your pathway is not as direct as the nurse as straightforward as a nurse basically your pathway will not be as straightforward as a nurse you'll probably go through these hoops i've been talking about graduate fast ask for pt ask for h1b in the, along the way maybe find a boyfriend find a girlfriend who knows on the way maybe you say oh i love america so much i'm gonna serve in the military on the way you know things happen things happen my friends things happen i don't know what will be your pathway 
But all I'm telling you, for you to give yourself a chance, you have to struggle. If you don't win the green card, try and come on F1 visa because you have nothing to lose, my friends. Okay? Now, if you reach here, all right, that will be the and that's another video. I don't want to confuse the issues. I don't want to say everything in one video. So today I've covered, and by the way, those of you in Dubai, in Qatar, and all those, I've been telling you about these work visas. I'm still doing my research because I saw these things called H3 visa, H1, B, H1, 2 visas, where they bring seasonal workers. Okay, people can transfer like L1 visa. They can transfer from hotel to hotel. Some of them are in Qatar working with Mario. Marriott is here. It's American. You tell your employer, you know, I've always liked America. Can you transfer me from Qatar to America? They can find a visa for that and then you transition to America. Okay? I hope I'm making sense. So I'll talk about those visas also because today I talked of immigrant and non-immigrant visa. So I hope I've not confused anyone. But I don't want to put all these things in one video. Of course, there are those little visas that you can use for two years, three years and go back home. Those, is for, those are for another day. And those involve a lot, a lot of research. I have to research and find out. The problem, these people don't put it public. They don't go putting public and saying, huh, we employ foreigners. Of course, they are not going to do that. But just know they exist. If you do your research, they exist. If you're working in a nice hotel that is American, if I were you, never get scared of HR. HR is there to keep you. That is what they are trained. They are trained to keep you, to retain you because you have the experience, okay? All right, so keep that in mind. You can go and say, you know, sir, madam. Oh, sorry, don't say madam. Madam is yours. Madam, by the way, if you didn't know, madam is here. They call it it's like escort, it's like prostitute. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you, you need to learn American. You say, hello, miss, you know, or mister, okay? I've always dreamt of going to America. And now, you know, I, I know you have hotels there. Can you transfer me? I want to go to America. You know what I mean? Oh, well, they're like, sure. When there's an opening, we can try that. Why not? Guys, if you have a dream, don't fear to ask, okay? No, can the door shall be open for you. In the Bible, it says, no, can the door shall be open. Ask and it shall be given. I believe that. At ah, the bottom of my heart, I believe that, okay? You can ask if you are working with an American company. Don't look desperate. Just say, you know what? I've always thought of going to America. You know, so is there a way you can transfer me? Okay? And even with that, I can give you examples. I can give you examples personally. When I came to this country, I was working in New Jersey, okay? As a nurse. Now I wanted to move to California. I had to hire this truck. 18-wheeler. They're called 18-wheelers. They are big. I put my sofas, my bed, everything, and the truck transferred my car, everything, all the way to California. And you know, when they, I went to California to find a new job as a nurse, I went to HR. They quoted for me the salary. They said, with the experience, we can give you $28 an hour. My friends, I just come from New Jersey. I know after I came from home, my salary was $23. But you know what? $23 per hour. I never got that because the shortage was so bad. I would show up anytime and they tell me, Janet, if you pick Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll give you $50 an hour. Now here I am. I'm used to earning $50 an hour. I'm moving to an even more expensive state and someone is giving me $28. I said, excuse me, when I came for the interview, they told me $38 an hour, you know, as a beginning. Then the lady's like, okay, hold on, hold on. She went in the back room. She came back and said, okay, sign here. We're going to change your salary from $28 to $38 an hour. Right there, I changed my life. Right there. Okay, I could have chosen to just go and say, <laughs> I'm scared, I can't say anything. The human resource is trained to stay with the interest of the company, to retain you. Human resource is very important. The services you are going to give are very important. So they have a role to keep you. They are happy to have you. So you can negotiate. You can say, you know what, I love this job. You know, but you know, 28 doesn't make sense. I'm very good at this. You can add, then they added for me. That was just the beginning. After they added the salary to 38 per hour, I say, you know what? Uh, to be quite honest, I just arrived last, last week with 18 wheeler. My car is on the road. My sofa sets, all those things, they cost me $3,000. Can I have relocation benefits? Oh, okay. Make sure you keep your receipts, okay? After it arrives, just come in with the receipts. I said, thank you, ma'am. I signed the contract there. End of story. As soon as the truck arrived, I put my things in the truck. Straight human resource with my receipts, $3,000 in my bank account. It's called relocation allowance. Ask and it shall be given, knock and the door shall be given to you. Okay? My other job I finished, 
Okay, I say, you know what? Now I'm a nurse practitioner. You know what? I've heard that if you work in underserved areas, they can pay your student loans. I'm like, I'm not going to sit back. They quote for me a salary. I'm like, you know what? This is very low. I didn't expect this. You know, I just you know, came from University of California, Los Angeles. And by the way, when I work, patients love me so much. I'm thinking you can strike a deal. By the way, do you have a student loans repayment? Oh yeah, for nurse practitioners, we actually do. Would you want to apply for that? But you have to work for, for five years for us. I say, yeah, no problem. All right, where's the papers? Signed. Student loans paid off in five years. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. Okay? I hope I'm making sense. If you are that person who just sits there, and but you have to know what you're offering. Okay? If you are confident in your skills, you go there, you speak confidently, ask and the door shall be asked. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I hope I'm giving you some skills, okay? Alright, so the main idea today, why I came here is to shape for you the roadmap to America and how people end up in America and stay here permanently. I hope I've given for you the difference between immigrant and an immigrant. Immigrant, those are permanent residents, they are green cards, the embassy knows clearly why you're coming, they are just processed per protocol, the visa most likely has been processed in America, you are just going there to receive it. It's not about denying, it's about proof, paperwork, making sure you are the right person. On the other side of the coin is non-immigrant, temporal, you have a responsibility to prove to the embassy that your intent is to do your business in America and go back home. Demonstrate family ties, strong family ties okay choose your visa wisely if you are choosing temporal visas like visiting visa b1 b2 be sure you're coming here to network be sure you're coming here on a temporal basis make use of your time in america and go back home unless other things come up like love in the air you find that uh, american african american like you or someone you used to know in high school you fall in love again maybe things can change if not my friend you will not get a social security number no one will give you a job on a visiting visa okay i hope we are we are on the same page on the other hand if you hang in there do your homework get f1 student visa come here as a student you have a long way to go you have time and it will be hard that's why i say do your research choose the school wisely choose a cheap school if you run you're an athlete look for scholarships and that brings me to another point before i finish if you are looking for a scholarship no one will give you a scholarship without admission in your hands you cannot come to me and say janet help me with a scholarship what do you have they will not use that education you have at home unless you're coming on a fulbright fulbright or government scholarships directly from home that's a different case but for you to get these other scholarships you have to do some of those and some of you are doing the exams called tall for sats when you have those things in your pockets and you demonstrate that your your score was high you know what i mean or you have admission already they can give you based on poverty not poverty but uh, what can i say financial difficulties you can get a scholarship based on your background but at least you have admission do not ask for a scholarship and you have nothing in your hands, my friend. You're, you're dreaming. Oh, I'm looking for a sponsor. What do you have? Do you understand? I hope I'm very clear. I hope I'm very clear. I've told you my preference is F1 visa. Don't forget, fall is coming. October is coming. The green card will open. If it opens, Janet will be here to announce the news. Go on the correct website. Do the right thing. Don't apply twice. Have the correct pictures. Follow directions put in. Don't apply twice, my friends, okay? I've answered so many questions when it comes to green card. If you are new on this page, immigrant business directory you search it on facebook by the way if you search now i'm number one on the list if you go searching immigrant the word immigrant or immigration janet is number one on the list probably i have the most videos on facebook on that topic so i'm very high up on the rankings take your time before you ask every weekend watch two three videos you will learn something my friends okay all right so i don't know some of you came in late but before i finish i promised you one thing i said i come to present okay based on what people are telling me i tell you my friends i'm a very positive person i don't like saying negative things but sometimes we have to deal with them especially if they're affecting my followers i'll have to deal with them okay People have been telling me, Janet, I had this bad story. Is it true? I came here, someone put a thing in my drink, and then, you know, something bad happened. We don't like such things to happen to anyone, okay? When you come here, be responsible, be careful. Don't trust everybody, okay? All right, that brings me, I'll read this letter for you guys, okay? I'll read for you this letter in conclusion. If you have time, that's fine. If not, this video will be here. 
I went to this website, it's called Quora.com, and people post so many questions. I thought this was a very interesting article, okay? It was posted by, there was a question saying, why are Nigerians fleeing, uh, fleeing Nigeria, okay? So let me read to you. My parents fled Nigeria because we won the visa lottery in 1998. And that was the worst experience of my life because Nigeria was such a lively and joyous place for me. I lost all my friends and my life and came to a country different from my own. Okay, are you here guys? All right. Actually, the irony is today I hear my friends back home wishing that they could be me or trade spots with me. I laugh at them like, do you, know, do, do you not know how blessed you are? You didn't lose all of your identity to come to a new country and gain a new one at such a tender age did you so basically this person is saying if you're back home you're lucky don't start wishing to be here okay let's continue nigerians will always have their dream and then i'll always see reality well they think they are fleeing a corrupt country with economic difficulties in search of better prospects but the reality of the situation is you will work your butt off in the u.s to see any fruits of your labor that's a fact that's exclamation mark okay you can take advantage of the free healthcare given to those from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, ETC, but it will never compare living in your own country, no property tax, no wahaha, general community and brotherhood, okay? I'm almost done, guys. This will affect some of you, all right? Let me just continue. In the U.S., you pay property tax, mortgage, your paycheck is taxed, the government taxes everything, and if you don't pay, they will ruin your life. There is a lot of debt and loans in this country, credit cards, a sacrifice that's behind all the mansions and bling they show you on TV. I believe Nigerians either flee here to the UK or to India, and I can't vouch for what it's like to live in those two other countries, but I will tell you, if you seek to flee to US, you will start from scratch and work your butt off. If you don't, then you get ready to have it worse here than you had it back home. I'm almost done. Nigerians will never see what I see in Nigeria and its potential, so it's easier to flee, but I personally will never in my life leave my home country and come to a new one. I did not, I did because my parents won the lottery, like I said, but personal choice, I will never flee Nigeria. End of, of, of that letter, okay? So the reason I read for you this letter is because some of you will be in the same situation, some of you will have the same mindset, some of you will be thinking the same thing. I beg to disagree with this woman. I love America. It has given me opportunities. They tax me, but I enjoy life. Are you understanding opinions? Okay? This is my opinion. I would encourage you to come to America, my friends. The thing is, if this woman is more than 26 years old, they should take the plane and go back to Nigeria. End of story, full stop. The parents made for her decisions. If it's too bad, stop talking about it. Go home and make a difference. Okay? Life is a choice. After 18, life is a choice. Life is a choice. Life is a choice. Life is a choice. You come here. It's not working for you. Take the plane. Go back home. Am I clear, guys? I'm just saying. I'm, I'm a very black and white person. I don't have in-betweens. I don't mix issues. Okay? It's either good or bad. So if it's here, I'll deal with the issues. There is no place that has no issues. Okay? All right. Let me, t let me tell you Janet's, the Janet's response. This is me responding you're talking to a vlogger you're talking to a blogger with opinions deal with them like them hate them we are here i love you okay this is janet all right by the way another american responded saying they love this country so much but they like nigeria and all that basically what i say you cannot look at lagos you cannot look at nigeria and start thinking everyone lives like lagos or nigeria just because you have good jobs you have good electricity you drive nice cars in lagos you drive nice cars in nairobi does not mean that someone in my village in mugunga mautuma is struggling they don't have food okay end of story period I'll pay taxes so you make my roads. I'll pay my taxes so you do the right thing. So long as there's accountability, no corruption, rule of law. And capitalism has to arrive in Africa. I'm telling you. Me, I don't pretend. Okay? Does she have a point? Yes. Are there things? And to end that story for me, I say this. Dignity is at the core of every human being. Every human being needs dignity. By the way, I would rather die poor but you give me my dignity. I'd rather die in Africa and you give me my dignity. I get that point. But you know what Janet chooses? I choose to have very self, high self-esteem. I choose to have very high self-esteem that no human being will shake my soul. I understand that. 
okay? You can come with your nonsense. I don't care. I'm here for the good. I'm here to earn. I'm here to make a living. Whatever you think, whatever you do this, I don't care, okay? So let's keep that in mind. If you go around negative people, your mind will be negative. You will be discouraged. You will never succeed. You will always look at the dark side when there's a bright side. Okay, guys? You understand how it works? So, the reason I presented this last part is because I've been receiving these letters. And probably Janet, did, people didn't know Janet's opinion. So, I just have to tell you. For me, I believe you're doing the right thing. You want to improve your life. You want to come as a student. You want to improve your family. You want to earn a better living. You're probably jobless. You're probably struggling. You want to do a better things. Don't come here and despise someone that opens for you the door. Okay, when people open for you the door, be thankful. You will be blessed more. That is my opinion. That's just how I look at life. Okay, stay positive, my friends. Stay positive, all right? So I'm seeing someone saying NCLEX. NCLEX, I will do a video. If you've never watched my video, I help nurses how to pass the exam down here. I made a video on how I became a nurse in America and people have started doing exactly that. And by the way, some of, now of them, in fact, one of them, I know she's waiting to do the test as a registered nurse because they followed my video and did exactly, exactly what I told them. Okay? All right. Guys, you're on the right track. When you come here, stay positive. When you come here, if you didn't watch my video, I told you what to do. The first time you arrive in America, there are some courses you will need to do. You will have to sacrifice the first few years. If you don't sacrifice the first few years, my friends, it will always be hard. But remember, when you first come here, you will probably not be sleeping. Okay? I'm just telling you the truth. But you have to look at the price. You have to look at the price. You can't look at today's short term. You have to look at long term. Okay, look at four years, five years down the road. You come here today, probably you're just struggling. People think you know nothing. People think you're poor. People think you're nothing. But you go, you work day shift, you work night shift, you run to school, you become a pharmacist, you run to school, you become a doctor, you run to school, you become a nurse, you become go to school, you become a radiologist, you become a biomedical engineer, you become something bigger than people will be looking at you five years and saying, Wow, isn't she that came here? She started with ten dollars an, an hour, she started with nine dollars an hour, going to school, not sleeping. That's how you think. That's how you think. If you join these people who come here, they're not thankful. And I told you in the other videos, which country on earth can you mention for me that anyone can go there, buy a car, buy a home, get land, any part of the country, and stay permanently and feel welcomed? Probably not many countries, my friends. So when you come, have that positive attitude, okay? It's not going to be easy. It's not roses. You have to struggle. But remember, the first five years is for you to set your foundation. However old you are, just start. Never give up, my friends, okay? All right. Remember, I'm a blogger. I started my YouTube. Janet Rangi is my YouTube video. You can go there. Remember to subscribe. I'm sending videos there also. So if some people like YouTube. If you want to find me on YouTube, it's Janet Rangi. If you want to find me on this well, uh, Facebook, you have to go to the search button and say Immigrant Business Directory. You'll find all my videos, my friends. Okay? All right. I also, I also have a website. ImmigrantBusinessDirectory.com ImmigrantBusinessDirectory.com My email is Janet at ImmigrantBusinessDirectory.com You can find me in all those avenues, my friends. Okay? All right. As I always say, Remember to keep the dream alive and have a strong desire to succeed. The desire will push you over the edge. The desire will pull you from the crowd. You will be the best among everyone. You stand, you fall, you stand, you fall, but you never give up. Okay? Never give up. Stay positive. Believe in yourself one day at a time. Okay? I've enjoyed your company. Thank you for spending this time with you. Okay? With me. Thank you for spending the time with me. You would have been somewhere else. You chose to come and spend time with Janet. Okay? I love all of you. I'll come to the comments. I will respond. If I'm late with emails, please forgive me. Okay? Thank you so much. Jen is watching from the UK. Thank you for choosing to share and for come here you from UK. All the way from United Kingdom coming to watch Janet in America. People from Qatar coming to watch Janet. People from Dubai coming to watch Janet. People from Australia coming to watch na Janet. From Nairobi, from Lagos, okay, from Uganda, from Tanzania, from Rwanda. I get emails from everywhere. 
Immigration is a federal issue. It doesn't matter which state you go. It's a federal issue. You can find any lawyer from any state they can represent you, my friends. Okay? Thank you so much for always following my page. I'll come to your comments. I love you all for showing up, all right? All right, someone is from, are you from Iran? Someone is from Iran. Uh, someone from Afghanistan. Uh, someone from Jordan. Okay? Thank you so much. I love everyone. Until the next video, stay positive. Keep the desire, my friend. Okay? Good day and bye-bye. Love you.